So, I don't know if you heard, but it is a new year. We're now living in the future, I guess. The future really is here, and now it's gone. Yeah, the future's next year. The point is, things are always changing. In the past 20 years, though, robots have become such an important part of our lives that I think many people don't even notice all the times that they interact with them on a daily basis. I think it's safe to say that, generally speaking, robots are great. But that doesn't make for an interesting video, does it? Just talking about how great they are. It's my job to point out the bad things, the interesting things. My name is Danny Burke, and this is the top Top 10 scary robots that lost control. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the robot cannon. In 2008, a tragedy in South Africa occurred when a robotic cannon malfunctioned, killing nine soldiers and injuring a further 15. It was the first day in which the soldiers had used live ammunition on this anti aircraft gun. As the guns fired, one of them had a stoppage. Now, this happens sometimes, and technicians came out to quickly fix the gun. This time, though, after the gun was fixed and began firing again, it swung wildly to the left. One barrel fired a burst of 15 to 20 shots in just one eighth of a second. That's all it took to kill the nine soldiers and injure 15 others who were operating the other guns to the left of the malfunctioning one. Moving on to number nine now, we have the robot surgeon. In 2015, news broke of a robot surgeon that killed 144 patients and injured a further 1,391. Basically, if this robot was a person, it would be one of the worst killers of all time. Technically speaking, though, if I'm being honest, this wasn't all due to one single robot. Those deaths and injuries were from many different robots used during surgeries in the US. If you want to talk about specific robots though, there was an example in this study of a mechanical surgeon that killed two people and injured 52 others when it kept powering down mid-operation or making an incorrect movement. Another common case that caused one death and 119 injuries were pieces of the robot falling off into the patient, requiring a human surgical team to intervene and retrieve the broken hardware. Now, The good news is that with every mistake, technicians and engineers are are learning invaluable lessons about how to make these robot surgeons as safe as they can possibly be in the future. Moving on to number eight now, we have Volkswagen. In 2015, a robot killed a contract worker at a Volkswagen production plant in Germany. A 22 year old male was part of a team that was setting up the robot when it grabbed him and crushed him to death against a metal plate. Now, the initial report from the company blamed human error. A spokesperson said that the robot normally operated within a confined area at the plant where its job was to grab grab car parts and manipulate them. This tragedy saw the young man suffering severe injuries to his chest. He was immediately rushed to hospital, but ultimately died from his wounds. Now, At the time, this was thought to be the first death in Europe caused by a robot machine, even though its owners did say it was totally human error. Next up at number 7 now, we have electrocution. In 2015, it was reported that a man had been killed by a robot at a car parts factory in India. The 24 year old worker was adjusting a metal sheet when the robot holding the sheet stabbed him in one of his arms. One of his colleagues explained to the local newspaper that the sheet had got dislodged and that the man had tried to reach from behind the machine to adjust it. That's when the welding sticks punched forward right into the man's abdomen. At this point in the story, some people claim that the man was electrocuted. The company has kept details of this whole story tightly under wraps, and so there has been no real way to confirm the ultimate cause of death. In the aftermath, police reviewed CCTV footage of the factory and interviewed every one of his co-workers to ensure that nothing illegal was taking place. Moving on to number 6 now, we have the bear spray. In December 2018, it was reported that 24 Amazon employees were hospitalized when a robot malfunctioned, spraying their workplace with bear repellent that put one in a critical condition. It's said that the robot accidentally tore open a 9 ounce can of bear repellent at an Amazon warehouse in New Jersey. This exposed 55 employees to concentrated capsaicin, the active ingredient in pepper spray. 30 employees were treated on the scene, 24 were taken to hospital as a precaution, and one was reported to be in a critical condition. Fortunately, nobody was seriously injured. Moving on to number 5 now, we have the factory. In December 2018, a shocking story came out of China where a factory worker was skewered with 10 steel spikes after a robot malfunctioned and impaled him. Seriously, look away if you're squeamish, these pictures are horrible. Incredibly, the 49 year old man managed to survive the initial accident. Surgeons worked quickly to remove the steel spikes and found that one of them was just 0.04 inches from a major artery. Each of these steel bars measured 30 centimeters in length.
length and 1.4 centimeters in diameter. The accident occurred when the robotic arm collapsed on the man, sending its spikes piercing right through him. Surgeons actually struggled to figure out how to examine his insides due to the fact that they couldn't x-ray him because of the steel spikes. An emergency surgery saved his life the very next day. I don't know what happened to the robot though. Moving on to number four now, we have McDonald's. Now this story comes from 2009, where an employee for a company that supplies McDonald's was killed by a malfunctioning robot. Anna Maria Vital of La Puente was pronounced dead after sustaining crushing injuries. They were caused by boxing machinery after Anna tried to remove a box that had been lodged in the machine. The scene was quickly contained and employees were turned away at the entrance. One employee who witnessed the event said that when the box moving robot grabbed Anna, mechanics tried to remove her from the machinery but it was just too late. A spokesperson for the company said, we are deeply saddened by this tragic accident that occurred at our manufacturing plant in the city of industry. On behalf of our entire organization, we want to express our deepest sympathies to the families and friends of the individual involved in this unfortunate accident. Next up at number three now, we have Uber. In March 2018, Uber made the news for all the wrong reasons when one of their self-driving cars killed a woman on the street in Arizona. The local police said the self-driving car was in autonomous mode at the time of the crash, but there was actually a human in the driver's seat. The victim was walking outside of the crosswalk area and later died in hospital. As a result, the company said it was pausing its self-driving car operations across a number of US cities. Police investigation revealed that yes, the woman was actually walking outside of the crosswalk area with a bicycle when she was hit. Many people have said this isn't a good enough excuse for autonomous vehicles though and that they need to be worked on a lot more if they can't prepare for humans breaking the rules of the road, even just a tiny bit like that. Moving on to number two now, we have Kenji Arada. That's the name of the man that was checking on a malfunctioning robot arm at the Kawasaki vehicle plant in Akashi, Japan in 1981. The machine had been turned off, but as Kenji leapt over a chain fence to inspect the robot, he accidentally hit the switch that reactivated it. As a result, he was almost instantly pinned against the machine that's used for processing automobile gears and was crushed to death before his co-workers could do anything. At first, there was a lot of criticism towards the company about their safety protocols. Others actually defended them and pointed out that a robot was designed so that if the gate on the chain fence was opened, it would always lose power. If Kenji had opened the gate rather than jump right over the fence, the arm could not have possibly been activated even if he had not the switch. And finally, number one now, we have Wanda Halbrook. In 2015, tragedy struck at Ventura Iona, a company which specializes in the welding and stamping of truck bumpers. 57-year-old Wanda Holbrook was the victim of a robot malfunctioning. It hit and crushed her head, killing her almost instantly. She left behind a husband, three children, and grandchildren. I think the most upsetting thing for her family, though, was the lack of answers. Her husband ended up suing five robotics companies, which he believed all played a role in his wife's death due to the negligence by those who designed, built, tested, and monitored the robots. He said he wanted to make sure nothing like this ever happens to another family. All right, guys, that is that. That's all my apocalyptic robot stories for you today. Do you want to hear more, though? I know we used to do quite a few robot videos back in the day, like last year. We can return to that if you want. Whatever you want, let me know as always. Thank you for watching, guys. My name is Danny Burke, and I will see you all in the next one.